The latest episode of the 2023 zombie TV series The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon is absolutely amazing, the second episode is filled with thrilling and captivating content, romantic Paris, France is turned into hell on earth, the true man, Daryl, shows his incredible prowess in dealing with the zombie threat, new setting surprises zombies reproducing offspring, I highly recommend everyone to watch the original series, without further ado, let's get started. The midnight hour in Paris always has a captivating allure. Isabelle, resembling a glamorous lady, prepares to embark on her nocturnal adventure. This is a place that can create the most romantic atmosphere, but it's also a city where love can easily evaporate. The dim light attracts one hungry and needy soul after another. Isabelle is intoxicated, and after venting her emotions she chooses to leave. Alcohol and hormones are not the purpose of her visit. After obtaining two wristwatches, Isabelle hastily departs from the bar. She was once again under the tower enjoying the wonderful night view. Suddenly, a commotion nearby grabs her attention. A man is suddenly attacked by a stranger, and a vehicle careens out of control into the crowd. Isabel is terrified and quickly retreats. She then heads to the subway station. The recent events have left Isabel shaken, but she doesn't dwell on them, until the subway slowly approaches, and something even more horrifying unfolds inside the train carriage. Before Isabel could react, Several zombies appeared on the platform, and the humans ran away in fear. Isabel rushes out of the subway station to the surface, but the situation outside is even worse. Traffic is in chaos, and people are scattering in all directions. Isabel is at a loss. She walks over to the scene of a car accident to check on the driver's condition. However, in the next moment, the driver's contorted body stands up and slowly approaches Isabel. Isabel, seeking help is shocked to find the same situation behind her. Isabel finally understands why people on the streets are desperate to flee. As she watches the zombies closing in step by step, Isabel panics. Luckily, at the critical moment, a stylish BMW comes to her rescue. Isabel's boyfriend, Quinn, signals for her to get in. They have no choice but to drive away from the city center. Isabel watches in terror as everything unfolds. Soon, they arrive at Isabel's residence. She plans to return and pack her belongings, but more importantly, she intends to take her sister with her. Lily, who has just woken up from a nap, is unaware of the events outside. Isabel persuades Lily, albeit reluctantly, to leave. They drive away from the city center. Hoping to escape the crisis, the car's radio broadcasts government notices, with the military urging residents to stay home and remain calm. Suddenly, Lily begins to feel unwell, and they decide to stop at a gas station for a short break. Watching Lily's pale complexion, Quinn suggests seeking medical help. Unexpectedly, Lily repeatedly refuses, claiming that she only needs a few minutes of rest. But in the next moment, Isabel learns the truth. Lily is pregnant. Quinn seems to understand the situation and urgently pulls Isabel aside. He tells her that they cannot take Lily with them in these circumstances. The place they are heading to has no children's hospital, and they must leave this area as soon as possible. With potential threats all around, bringing Lily would only be a burden. Quinn then passionately confesses his love for Isabel, promising a future together. But what Quinn doesn't know is how Isabel would ever give up on her sister. Seizing the moment when Quinn leaves, Isabel quickly drives away from the gas station with her sister. Soon after, an ambulance on the road catches Isabel's attention, and she stops to seek help. To her horror, the people inside the ambulance have already turned into zombies. They make a hasty escape, but one of the zombies grabs Lily's hand and begins to gnaw on it. Lily struggles desperately and manages to close the car door. They speed away from the scene. They drove farther and farther away until they came to a church at night. Lily's condition worsens, and Isabel is desperate. A nun opens the church door and welcomes them inside without hesitation. Later, the priest from the church also comes out. Seeing the bite marks on Lily's arm, the priest takes her into the church and provides clean clothes. Isabel, watching her weakened sister, feels heartbroken. These sisters have relied on each other since they lost their parents, and Isabel has always been the one taking care of her sister. Isabel asks about the child's father, but before she can get an answer, Lily starts screaming loudly, the child is about to be born. In the urgency of the situation, the priest and the nun assist Lily in childbirth. However, no matter how hard Lily tries, the baby won't come out smoothly until Lily exhausts her last breath. Looking at her sister who had lost her breath, Isabel, she didn't give up. She kept calling out her sister's name from the bedside. Also unwilling to give up was the priest. After a moment, Lily's fingers suddenly moved. Isabel looked at her sister in disbelief thinking she had come back to life. But in the next moment, 
Lily suddenly opens her eyes. Isabel realizes that her sister has turned into a zombie. The nun quickly brings a cloth to restrain Lily. The surgical knife is ready. After a lot of effort, they finally manage to extract the baby from Lily's womb. The nun takes the baby aside to examine it. With the baby's cries filling the room, they confirm that the child is healthy. Even the priest is amazed. It's nothing short of a miracle. The nun hands the baby to Isabel. The low growls of the zombies outside contrast sharply with the baby's cries. The priest gestures for Isabel to leave with the child. Isabel takes one last look at her sister before finally leaving the room. This is how Isabel and Lorette end up living in the convent. Until Daryl's appearance. Daryl has never had faith. Cultivating faith in this dark and bloody post-apocalyptic world was a nonsense to him. As a result of the events at the convent, the few nuns there were died in the fighting. The once peaceful courtyard was now filled with bloody corpses. Daryl knew that all this trouble was of his making. So, he accepted the task given to him by the nuns to escort Laurent to the Union of Hope's base in northern France. However, the journey was long and perilous, requiring them to devise a safe route. Daryl wanted to follow the priest's directions through Paris. Instead, Isabel chose to detour through Angers, where she knew people. Moreover, Isabel's friend possessed a radio that could directly contact the base up north. Daryl was puzzled since the route had been devised by the priest, and taking the detour through Angers would make the journey longer. Isabel remained silent. Daryl soon realized that Paris had already descended into chaos. They prepared to set out. Laurent, as usual, was talkative always seeking someone to chat with. Daryl's responses were cleverly concise. Just then, the donkey came to a halt, refusing to move no matter what. Daryl was the first to sense something amiss. Sure enough, several zombies suddenly appeared ahead. Isabel and the others quickly went on high alert. At this moment, Daryl decided on a different approach. He untied the reins, preparing to use the donkey as bait. Daryl acted decisively, firing a shot into the sky. Startled. The donkey charged straight into the group of zombies. This tactic proved to be effective as the zombies chased the donkey. Now without transport they had to continue on foot. However, it was getting late, and they needed to find a place to stay as soon as possible. Just then, they heard whistling from the surroundings. A crossbow bolt was fired at Daryl, prompting them to quickly locate the enemy's position. Seeing that there was only one person, Daryl chased after them. The individual was surprisingly fast and disappeared in no time. But in the next moment, this hit knocked Daryl down to the ground directly. Daryl should start paying more attention to what's behind him. Daryl and the others became captives and were taken to a school. Daryl feels a bit frustrated. Soon, they were ushered into the school, and Daryl was forcefully made to kneel upon entering. Isabel and her group received relatively better treatment because the children understood that Daryl was the only potential threat. Moments later, the boys howled like wolves, seemingly awaiting the arrival of their leader. Before long, a girl descended the stairs and inquired about the purpose of Isabel's group's visit. Isabel explained that they meant no harm and were stranded here because their donkey had run off during the journey. Isabel then mentioned that she was a nun. To ensure the authenticity of Isabel's claim, the girl asked them to recite a prayer. This was no problem for Isabel. They recited the prayer perfectly. The girl was a believer too, so she believed them. However, her gaze then turned towards Daryl, who had remained silent. Isabel improvised and lied that Daryl was Father Daryl, a preacher from America from long ago. And so, Daryl and the rest of the group managed to break free from their predicament. The girl went by the name Lou, and she proceeded to give them a tour of the school. It's hard to imagine how a group of children have survived so long in the middle of a post-apocalyptic world, and even managed to keep the school in good order. Lou explained that they relied on hunting, farming, sewing clothes, and even organized their own study sessions to stay alive. Staying together and helping each other was their key to survival. Isabel marveled at Lou's leadership. However, Lou led them to another room, where an elderly woman lay in bed. Lou introduced her as Mrs. Du Bois, the one who had taught everything to the children. Unfortunately, Mrs. Du Bois had fallen seriously ill, and her condition was grim. Without medication, Mrs. Du Bois had been battling the illness for several months. They later joined the children for dinner. The conditions here were surprisingly good, with an abundance of food supporting the quality of their meal. Since they were all religious, they began the meal with a prayer. Father Daryl was slightly embarrassed, but he had to improvise. Fortunately, Daryl did well, delivering a sincere and heartfelt speech that diffused the awkwardness. Isabel couldn't help but secretly admire Daryl's talent. However, Daryl is even more talented in this part. After dinner, 
Daryl seeks Lou's help as he wants a donkey for the journey. One of the boys mentioned a person named Gaines. Lou added that Gaines lived not far away in a castle and had a horse. He also had a lot of supplies collected from the village. The only problem was that he wasn't very friendly. Daryl wanted Lou to accompany him to the castle. However, Lou outright refused, as they had suffered greatly at the hands of Gaines before. Daryl argued that if Gaines had ransacked supplies, he must have raided a pharmacy as well. To save Mrs. Dubois, they needed to go to the castle in search of medicine. Daryl's proposal gained the approval of the others. Mrs. Dubois was like a mother to all of them, and they had to find a way to save her. Later, all the school's children gathered in a classroom. Daryl had no idea what was happening. Then, a remarkable sight unfolded. Two boys operated a makeshift generator, and miraculously, a movie played on the television screen. The children were delighted, and even Daryl found it unbelievable. To watch a movie so leisurely in the midst of the apocalypse was an exciting experience for everyone present. Everyone had smiles on their faces, except for Daryl, who eventually became melancholic. As night fell, there was only one vacant room left in the school. Inside the room, there was only one bed, and Isabel declined Daryl's offer to sleep on the floor. They talked for a long time, and the conversation eventually turned to the movie they had just watched. And then Daryl revealed his feelings. The movie they had watched was one Daryl had seen when he was a child. The person he watched it with was his brother, Merle. Daryl valued relationships deeply. The next day, Daryl and Lou set out for the castle to infiltrate it. They had two options, the drawbridge at the entrance or the moat. However, the moat was already swarming with zombies, so Daryl had no choice but to use the drawbridge. They quickly reached a nearby warehouse and finally found suitable tools. When Lou wasn't looking, Daryl swiftly closed the warehouse door. He knew that if anything happened to Lou, the school's children would struggle to survive. Daryl then approached the drawbridge and, with the help of the tools, successfully made his way into the castle. Inside, he indeed found a horse, but there were no other signs of people in the courtyard. Soon, Daryl located the storage room, which was stocked with supplies, including medications. However, at that moment, he heard a noise nearby. Daryl picked up his gun and ventured outside. Following the sound, he found a basement where a boy was being held captive. Daryl suspected that he was one of the school's children, and Ellison confirmed this. Daryl planned to escape with Ellison, but before they could leave, a gunshot rang out and a bullet narrowly missed them. It was Gaines. They began to fire wildly at each other, neither side gaining the upper hand. Daryl quickly handed the gun to Ellison, who started engaging with Gaines. Daryl slipped out and snuck up to the loft while the ammo was changing. Soon, Daryl was behind Gaines. With a knife against his neck, Gaines had no choice but to drop his weapon. To Daryl's surprise, when Gaines saw him, he became unusually excited. It turned out that Gaines was also an American, and he enthusiastically showed Daryl all of his possessions. He even had over 40 boxes of toothpaste. Gaines wanted to share it with Daryl, but Daryl was not impressed, because Daryl knew that these supplies were stolen by Gaines from the relief supplies. He couldn't trust the man before him. Daryl then took Gaines to the square. Ellison, knowing that Gaines had harmed many of the school's children, suggested that Daryl throw him into the pile of zombies. However, Daryl didn't do that and decided to leave the decision to Lou. Gaines is a little panicked and goes to the school where he'll never get away with it. Gaines tried to gain sympathy by revealing that he had a wife and four children waiting for him back in Texas. At that moment, he believed that the United States had not been affected by the zombie crisis, and that's when Gaines' defenses collapsed. Then Daryl pulled a wagon with supplies and prepared to return. Unfortunately, the carts will suddenly broke down. As Daryl inspected the wheel, Gaines seized the opportunity to grab a weapon. Both of them struggled, and in a moment of inattention, they both fell into the moat surrounding the castle. Daryl was lucky enough to have a weapon to deal with the zombies. Gaines, on the other hand, was trapped by a rope and helplessly watched as the zombies devoured him. However, there were too many zombies for Daryl to handle alone. In a critical moment, Daryl picked up a firearm and quickly aimed at an explosive canister. An explosion resounded, creating a bloody path for him to escape. After a brief bout of ringing in his ears, Daryl got back on his feet. There were still many zombies in the moat, and he needed to find a way out quickly. Suddenly, a zombie approached him, but just in time, a crossbow bolt shot through the air, saving him. It was Lou and her group who had come to the rescue. They successfully left the castle. 
Lou had also brought back the medication for Mrs. Dubois, and the children cheered as they gathered around. Unfortunately, the sad news came that Mrs. Dubois had passed away. Lou felt guilty as she returned late and couldn't save Mrs. Dubois in time. Daryl stepped forward and explained that his visit to the castle had been driven by his own agenda to find a horse. He couldn't guarantee that the medication would help Mrs. Dubois. Lou didn't blame Daryl and, after everyone had left, she sat alone by Mrs. Dubois's side, thanking her for everything she had done and for educating the children. The next day, the children at the school held a farewell ceremony for Mrs. Dubois. Daryl and his group had prepared the horse-drawn carriage and embarked on their journey once again. Meanwhile, in the monastery on the other side, Kadron, leaning on his cane, walked in. He was upset that all his loyal men had died, and that it was all Daryl's fault. Kadron silently vowed to make Daryl pay with blood for his actions. 